Check this out right here, man. The Vita deserves it. He has done nothing wrong, you know, as far as um, getting the Canelo fight now. Of course, you want to go back and pass. Of course, he, he had some missteps, you know, he, he missed weight. These biscuits. <laughs> it's just funny that people still try to blame Benavides for the fight not happening. You know, I, I think there's a lot of way, ways the blames can go. Maybe you can blame Benavides for missing his opportunity, yeah. And you could blame Canelo for... Um, for disliking that the and not fighting them, but I think the majority of the blame should go on the sanctioning bodies as well. You know what I'm saying? I think it's about I think it's about forty percent blame on Canelo, uh fifty percent blame on um the sanctioning bodies, and ten percent blame on Dave, David Benavides if you want to break it down in percentiles. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold, we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGA GM. Praise God to get money back for the YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Y'all know what time it is, man. The doctor's in the house. So, look, check it out. Today, we have some news regarding the Canelo. <laughs> the Canelo, uh... The Canelo undisputed situation, man, and his next upcoming fights. Assuming he beats Magia, right? Assuming he beats Magia. Uh, check this out right here, man. This tweet from Michael Benson. So, uh, uh, apparently, the WBA has um, called... Um, has, has declared... That uh, Edgar Berlanga is now the mandatory for uh, Canelo. <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> you know, and a lot of people are going to be upset. You say, oh, Canelo's going to fight uh, Berlanga with no problem. And, um, you know, instead of fighting Benavidez, and, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and which is rightfully so, because I do think that he'll, he'll, be, he'll, be more, uh, he'll be more prone to fight. Um, Berlanga, you know, then he will Benavidez, assuming he gets past Magia, which is the which is the most likely scenario, right? Um, but I want to say this, man, you got to pay attention to the verbiage. So first, number one, let's go back in time a little bit. Canelo, Canelo has already made it very clear, adamantly clear, vehemently clear. So Check I this out, though. First of all, you throwing too many big words at me, okay? Now, because I don't understand them, I'm going to take them as disrespect. Watch your mouth. That he does not want to fight Benavidez, you know, whether he deserves it or not, you know what I'm saying? Um, he doesn't want to fight him. He doesn't like him, so he feels like he doesn't want to give him the opportunity, you know, to, to much of our dismay, you know? Um, I, I want Canelo and Benavidez to, to fight. I think after Better Be Evan Bivol, Canelo and Benavidez is, is the second biggest fight in boxing, you know, so the fact that I want to see the most. And, um, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. Like, I think it still happens. I think Canelo's still going to fight him. But I think that people are saying that he's scared and blaming Canelo. I, I, Canelo has has already said that, you know, Canelo is the cash cow. You know, we already know that he, he, he generates the most revenue in boxing. So he has already said that... Um, he, he, he doesn't like ben, Benavidez. He's, he's not going to fight him. You know, but I, I think that he's going to fight him eventually. I think the fight actually does happen. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? However, a lot of people are rightfully so. Um, I'm bl blaming Canelo, you know, because he always says, what does he say? I do what I want. You know, I earned the right to do what I want. So if you wanted to fight Benavidez, you know, um, he could make that fight happen. You know, he could bring that fight into fruition. So it is right to blame him. So, you know, y'all know I love Canelo, man. You know, I ain't no shit in my game. I, I I like Canelo, but I, I I like the truth more. I don't like nothing more than the truth. And if he wants to make the fight happen, he can make that happen. You know, that goes for him doing what he wants, rightfully so. He's earned that earned that position. However, pay attention to the tweet. It says the WBA has declared Berlanga as a as as a mandatory. Berlanga hasn't had any fights since his last one against Padraig McCory, where he was a mandatory for uh, David Morrell. But they have yet declared him. Pay attention to the verbiage. So just as easy as they declared him the mandatory challenger, they could declare. Make the declaration where Canelo, if he doesn't fight Benavidez, has to vacate his belts because David Benavidez has been the mandatory for so long, right? So we have to keep it funky, man. Some of you that just solely blame Canelo, you're, you're like some of the people that you blame the athletes for how much money they make and, and, and for the decisions they make when they leave your team. But you don't think about the people behind the scenes, uh, executively or administratively, that make these decisions that make, and, make, and make just as much, uh, a lot of times way more than the athletes themselves. And, and they trade people whenever they want. So my point is that look how quick they, quickly they made uh, Terrence Crawford vacate his belt. So if they wanted to, they could make uh, Canelo vacate his belt, but they don't because Canelo, like we already covered, is a cash cow, the face of boxing. He generates the most revenue, so it is directly beneficial uh, and advantageous for him, for him to keep the belt because he pays the fee, which is a percentage. So that means that the more money that the person makes or the fighters make, the more money that they will get in turn. So so you can get mad at Canelo. Oh, you mad at 
because I'm styling on you. Only. I mean, you just keep your head in the sand, you remain ignorant. It's also the uh, section and body's fault. It's probably their fault more because they could force him to vacate or force him to, uh, uh, if he doesn't want to fight, it's mandatory. So I do think that Berlanga will fight him. Uh, I mean, I do think that Berlanga will probably get the fight, but I also think that Benavides will fight will fight later too, man. So I think we just got to play a, a place to blame accordingly. So it's not just, um, it, it, people could say, oh, it's Benavides' fault for not claiming the mandatory. Man, he's been the mandatory for two years. Benavides deserves it. He has done nothing wrong, you know, as far as uh, getting the Canelo fight. Now, of course, you want to go back and pass. Of course, he, he had some missteps. You know, he, he missed weight. <laughs> Yes, that was his fault. He vacated, went up to light heavyweight. But why did he vacate? He vacated because he didn't think he was going to get the, um, not vacated, sorry. He decided to move up to light heavyweight because he, he, he doesn't believe that he'll get the Canelo fight. But what's funny, speaking of David Benavidez, <laughs> it's just funny that people still try to blame Benavidez for the fight not happening. You know, I, I think there's a lot of way, ways the blames can go. Maybe you could blame Benavidez for missing his opportunity, yeah. And you could blame Canelo for, um... For disliking that the and not fighting them, but I think the majority of the blame should go on the section and bodies as well. You know what I'm saying? I think it's about I think it's about forty percent blame on Canelo, uh fifty percent blame on um the section and bodies, and ten percent blame on Def David Benavides if you want to break it down in percentiles. Now speaking of David Benavides, it's funny because if you notice also on the tweet, uh David Burrell is supposed to be fighting uh uh Kalazade, right? <laughs> Who's a pretty good fighter, you know. If I'm not mistaken, he only he only has two losses, one to Marcus Brown by decision, and then the other one to Archer Bredebier. So he's going to be a good test for David Morrell. But what I think is real funny is that uh, David Morrell said that, you know, he's been on uh, David Benavidez's heels, boy. <laughs> he's been on Benavidez's heels. And he said that he's going to move to light heavyweight to chase the people who's been avoiding him and who's moving to light heavyweight to fight Alexander Vosdick. David Benavidez. So just as much as David Benavidez is on Canelo's heels, that man, that, that man Morrell's on David Benavidez's heels. So it's just funny to watch, man. It's funny to watch, man. I appreciate y'all rocking me as always. And also, early prediction, I think Morrell wins that fight. Um, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good test. Just like David Benavidez, I think he wins his fight against Vazic. But that's going to be a good test, too. So I appreciate y'all rocking me as always. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it in the comments. Am I going too easy on Canelo? Shut up, bitch! Am I telling the truth? Am I keeping it funky? Y'all know what it is, man. You know what we do around here. You better come with it. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'm going to be on your head top. I love y'all for real, man. I remember with God, we can do anything. Without God, we are nothing. Y'all be easy. God bless. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds, they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold, we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.